Good morning and welcome. Welcome to this Sunday that we're celebrating uh, our Lord Jesus Christ as he was up on the mountain with his disciples. And so we have this celebration today of Transfiguration. And uh, on this Sunday of Transfiguration, we're celebrating that Jesus was seen by the disciples as God. That's what they saw. God. So I'm pleased to be here with you. And this is First Lutheran Church in Altoona, Pennsylvania, in downtown. And so welcome. Thank you so much for being here. We do have a few friends and guests with us, and that's always good. Once again, I'm going to be having a children's conversation after the gospel. And you come right up here like you did before, and that'll be great. Now, in our fellowship time, Dave Lutz will continue his Bible study. It'll be downstairs. You know what there is, a study of the Bible. We're still working on the end times, right? I don't know how long we'll work on that. Until hmm. it comes. Okay, so, so Dave said he's going to be preaching and teaching this for a long time to come, right? Because we don't know the time. But we do have donuts and beverages and conversation. Next Saturday is our first Lenten breakfast of the season. So that's 9 o'clock a.m. next Saturday. I can hardly believe that Lent is beginning, but it's beginning on Wednesday, Ash Wednesday. Come and get your ashes <coughs> around noon time, 12.15, and also 7 o'clock on Wednesday evening. That's our time to begin that. We do have one person who's in the hospital, and that's Janet Ellis. Uh, she had fallen at home, and so she had some uh, uh, checking her out there at the hospital. And tomorrow, uh, she's going to be going to... Uh, the Lutheran home for some physical therapy. So we'll remember that transition uh, in your lives, Steve and, and everyone. So uh, that's important. Now, we have a special intention for giving today. You know that S O U P E R, Super Bowl? Now, how are you going to give that money? How are you going to do it? Did you give it already? No, don't give it already because there are going to be some pots in the back with our young folks collecting that as your so-called ticket to get out of church today. <laughs> yeah, Pastor, good to see you smiling about that. Did you ever tell people they had to give out money as they left? No, I never did, but I, you know, I always say, let's take something up instead of something I know we take something up, too. That's Pastor Fisher. Good to have you with us today, and your wife. All right, so you'll be doing that. Now, we're going to listen to music this morning, and uh, Larry is with us. Oh, I just love when Larry comes and plays his trumpet. And Claude told me that what they're playing for the procession, for the prelude, moves right into our processional end. And so I won't be announcing <coughs> that, and there'll be some way that we'll know we begin. All right, so thank you. Thank you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord.
Fifty men of the company of prophets also went and stood at some distance from them as they both were standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. The water was parted to the one side and to the other, until the two of them crossed on dry ground. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, Tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, Please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, You have asked a hard thing. Yet, if you see me as I am taken from you, it will be granted to you. If not, it will not be. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see them, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. The word of the Lord. second reading is from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Even if our gospel was veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ our Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who would say, Let them shine out of the darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord.
Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white as such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say. For they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my Son, the Beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And as they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen, until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of our Lord. Jesus, they went away to a very special place. Have you ever taken your daughter to a special place? Yeah? You remember it well. You do. Maybe you'll tell her about it someday. And we have those experiences during life that are very, very special. And that's what we have in our gospel today. Mm, yeah? Uh -huh. Yes, we do. And so we'll just remember those special times. to use three words with you today as I uh, speak to you about our readings. And here are the three words. And, there's one that's easier. Immersive experience. An immersive experience. I had to look that up in the dictionary to make sure I knew what that meant. Although the word came to me as I was reading these lessons, I thought, oh, in the gospel we have an immersive experience for the disciples. In our Old Testament reading, we have an immersive experience for Elisha. And I'm wondering if you've had those kinds of experiences in your life. Immersive experiences. I'm going to tell you one that I had. This is a Black History Month. Did you know that? I don't pay much attention to it because I'm not around any black people. So it doesn't really impact me a lot. But when I was in seminary for my doctorate program, we had immersive classes. And the one that I remember so well was black history. We had a black teacher, and he said, here's what I want you white, we were all white, here's what I want all of you white people to do. Read everything that Martin Luther King wrote. He wrote a lot. Any volumes of stuff. 
And he said, I want you to read that, listen to that, pray about it, and we'll discuss it. And then also he had people from, and this was in Philadelphia, Philadelphia Seminary back in 97. He brought people in from the black community to have experiences with us in class with black people who told us all kinds of things, at least I didn't know. And it was an amazing thing. It was an immersive experience in the black culture. There were two sermons that I remember that I read that are so important, and you've probably heard it too. I have a dream. Do you remember that sermon? Very important. There in Washington, D.C. There at the uh, Lincoln Memorial. And then there's another one that's very important too, and that is, I've gone to the mountaintop, and I've looked over the promised land. I may not get there with you, but I've seen it from afar. That was the night before he was killed. Immersive experience. I remember that. Do you have experiences that you could recall that changed your life because you experienced something and you were immersed in it? How about the birth of a baby? For me, that was an immersive experience that I should never forget. How about your wedding? How about a funeral? Are you catching on here this morning a little bit? Please tell me you are, because I could go on and on. I'm trying to say what an immersive experience. You got it. Thank you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. So what was the immersive experience for the disciples on the mountain? They were given the vision of God in Jesus. They came back from the mountain. They didn't say anything for a long while. But you remember in Peter, he said, we were there on the mountain. We were the ones who saw and heard. What kind of experience had Moses given people? He burst them into the word of God from the mountaintop. How about Elijah being up there? Well, we heard what happened there in our Old Testament lesson. What did Elisha want? A double portion of the spirit of Elijah. And he received it. And he was a great prophet. And that was something for him that he never forgot because he received the mantle as Elijah was being taken up by the chariots. Pretty significant, right? It's memorable. It's there in our scripture. It's there so that we can read those words and say, the people of God before us want to tell us something about what God is like. And what our experience with God can be like every day. But I'm mostly thinking about those experiences that touch us so deeply that we are changed. The one with black history changed me a great deal. There have been retreats that I've been on that have changed me. There have been times here that have changed me. Experiences with you that have been immersive experiences that have changed me. Can you identify one or two of those in your life right now? Just contact that experience and say, Dear Lord, thank you that I've had some experience with you that is so rich and so deep that I'll never forget it. I'll never forget it. That's what an immersive experience is like. I want to ask that on this time that we have, when we're going to enter into Lent, we're going to move into Lent, that you remember who Jesus truly is. What is his identity? And don't forget that as we move along through these 40 days, these days when we will receive once again the word of God that is known to us very well, we don't have the opportunity. God will change us. Maybe it'll be the ashes that you receive. Maybe it'll be a breakfast. I don't know.
But when you have those experiences, you could be silent like those yourselves. We don't know what to say. But they took it in. They received it. It was the Spirit's grace to them. And so we too are graced by the Spirit of God so that we can be those proclaimers. Those people who say, I've had an experience with God. And I want to tell you something about it. That's what those emotional experiences are for. So that we can share it in some way. A God experience with others. So that they too know that God is alive and well and working in our midst. Working in your life. Working in mine. May you today say thank you God for those experiences that are rich, that are deep within me. And help me never forget to speak that to someone else. Amen. stand together to make a statement of our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. Consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit so that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, now and in our now. Thanks, God, in that time. Uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in the unity of the heart. To the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, has mercy on you and forgives you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, he strengthens you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keeps you in eternal life. Amen. And now as we celebrate the transfiguration of our Lord and his glory, we celebrate that Jesus embodied in human form the identity of God, the very God of and so we ask the blessing upon the church, the world, and all of God's creation. We pray for the church that the transformation of power of God enters the hearts of all people. May its leaders serve with examples of your grace and healing across time and space. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. We pray for the creation. That we will humbly observe the swirl of wind and the heat of the bright sun. Teach us to honor all you have made and to care for the animals, plants, air, and bodies of water of this planet. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those charged with leadership, lawmaking, governance of our towns, states, and countries. That they will strive for goodness and justice all the days of their lives and callings. Lord, in your mercy. 
We pray for any who are sick and suffering, especially those on our prayer and concern list. Guide us to offer hospitality, shelter, friendship, and care to any in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation and its ministry in the wider community. May we share the transforming beauty and love of God in ways that honor the dignity and of all whom we encounter. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus, please lift up, lift us up to see you in every time of need. Help us to look to you alone for help in the way we live our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy. In the Middle East, there are more military operations being carried out. We pray especially for the Holy Lands and Ukraine. We cry out for peace. Lord, in your mercy. Since we have a Savior who hears us, we once again pause in time of quiet prayer. Help us to speak to you as you to us, in silence as you move among us. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting that all the saints, prophets, and those who die in faith are held in your care, we remember in thanksgiving those who have died. Grant us your gifts of salvation as we await your coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy. Knowing that your Holy Spirit intercedes, intercedes for us always, we offer these prayers and also the silent intentions of our hearts. In the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth. In mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, not as we are, but as we are able, for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in his Holy Supper. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, he blessed it and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood given and shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised peace. Amen. 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 So now we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord, and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory, and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all.
may the precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace unto everlasting life. Amen. Serve the Lord.